Praise the Lord, saints, and God bless you for watching me once again. I believe that today is a special day because God has made this day and he has a lot of blessings in store for you. It's just about knowing exactly what he wants you to do and being in obedience um, to his word. Amen. Um, people of God, we live in perilous times that the devil has now infiltrated the church of God with such deception that a lot of people are under this hypnosis and they are refusing to study to show themselves approved in God's word. And therefore, they are approaching things of the spirit with humanistic ideas, carnally living according to the standard of the world, thinking that they have now received strategies and, and, and ideologies and methodologies in order to be successful, especially in spiritual warfare. And it's so sad that um, fetish priests in suits, um, the Bible clearly says that Wolves clothed in sheets, sheep's clothing um, are now giving ideas, concepts, giving some canal uh, um, instructions and strategies um, that is really hurting people because of their ignorance. And today, I believe that God, by His grace, is going to enlighten us through His Word. He is going to bring us to a place of sanity and what i mean by sanity is that he's going to break every enchantment of the wicked one concerning our life over our life every incantations every spells is going to liberate us from any carnality is going to now teach us his word and is going to now set us on the course so that we'll be able to now win the war that we are up against praise the lord Amen. People of God, I want to speak to you on a subject that I have, um, by His grace, entitled Weapons of War. Weapons of War. And if you do not mind, can you turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10? I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I am reading from verse 3. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word and i pray that you speak unto our hearts and you liberate us in jesus name amen now people of god every devout christian knows that we are at war the very day that we decided to be christians the bible says that for whosoever is born of god overcometh the world Mainly that when you became a Christian, the devil launched a tactical assault against your life because now you have shifted your position from the worldliness to godliness. Oh, praise the Lord. So, people of God, we are definitely at war. But see, the war in which we are in is not against flesh and blood like the apostle said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, we strive not against flesh and blood. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we are in a spiritual combat. We are fighting against the devil and his demons legions of demons that are finding everywhere possible to deprive us of the blessings of God, to steal, to kill, to destroy our destinies in God. But see, God being so good, 
that he will not enlist us in his army without giving us the arsenal, without giving us the weaponry in order to fight this battle. Praise the Lord. So the Apostle Paul now begins to enlighten the church of Corinth, the church in Corinth, uh, of the kind of weapons that are available to them in this spiritual warfare. Apparently, there were people in the church that were doing things carnally. They were walking as carnal men. They were doing things, people of God, as fleshly people. They were doing things after the manner of the flesh. In other words, they were using worldly concepts, worldly ideologies, worldly weapons to go into a spiritual combat which was impossible. You cannot use a worldly weapon. You cannot go buy an assault rifle and expect to win a spiritual battle with it. And it's so sad to let you understand that in this day and age that we find ourselves in, there are men of God, that are, there are men who proclaim to be of God that are now leading the congregation of God, the people of God, in spiritual warfare with carnal, with fleshly, with worldly arsenals, and brothers and sisters, come and see believers, come and see those who say they are Christians uh, using worldly weapons in the church of God, saying that they are battling against a spirit they don't see with their natural eye. Oh, praise the Lord. Let me give you a typical example. There are some people in the church now, as I'm speaking to you, that they were instructed to bring salt and grinders to the church because they are confronting the devil. They are confronting the demonic spirits that are fighting and wrestling against their life. They are confronting some demonic strongholds and powers of darkness. And the salt represents those demonic spirits, problems they are encountering in life, situations that they can't seem to find answers to. Those salts that they are bringing from their homes represent such issues and they are going to grind the salt in the church, I believe uh, maybe in a worship atmosphere, maybe in a prayer atmosphere, um, with the ideology that they are squashing the problems, such deception in the church of God. And come and see men and women going to the stores, buying salt, bringing grinders into the church of God, and come and see them grinding salt, grinding salt, speaking over the salt, and grinding the salt in the church. And we call this spiritual warfare. Ignorance. The Bible says my people perish because they lack knowledge. Christians have not come to the place of studying God's word. Uh, they have not come to the place of seeking the heart of God. They have not come to the place uh, of now getting acquainted with the word of God so that they will know the will of God. They will know the instructions of God. They will know the weapon God has provided for them to confront spiritual warfare, to partake of the spiritual warfare that confronts them. Praise the Lord. Amen? The, the Apostle Paul speaks to the Corinthian church that for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. People of God, listen to me. You are in the flesh. Physical body, flesh and blood. You are living in this carnal world, the world full of darkness. You are in this world. You are doing things in this world. You go to work, you come home, you eat, you drive, you do everything that the world expects you to do. But you see, there are some things that the world projects that you cannot take into a spiritual battle. So even though we walk in the flesh, we live in this world, we don't walk. We don't wrestle, we don't fight with the enemies of our destiny, the enemies of our life, our marriages, our businesses, our children, flesh likely. And it goes on to say that for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. 
Cannot mean they are not worldly. It's not the shotguns and the whips and the, uh, 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 and the nuclear bombs and the stones. Could you believe that stones were taken to the church because they are, they are in intense warfare? That a man of God who says he is of God instructs the church of church of God, the, the, the congregation members in the church, to bring rocks and stone to the church. So they are going to stone their enemy. They are going to stone demonic spirit. They are going to speak over that stone and they are going to throw that stone to a devil. Deception. People of God, if you are this, uh, uh, watching me and you are partaking in these things, uh, I'm here to tell you that people, it, 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 it is time to get yourself into God's word and, and study God's word and know for yourself the very things that God has made available to you. The weapons of our warfare, they are not stones. They are not salt. They are not salt. They are not canes that you go to cane the devil with. They are not belts that you, you use to whip the devil or demons. You can't stamp on the demon. You can't go to the church and shadow box as if you are, you are fighting the devil. No. They are not carnal. They are not worldly arsenals. They are not after the manner of the world. But they are mighty through God. That means for you to be a successful warrior and win battles spiritually on the spiritual war ground battlefield, then you must be in God. See, they are mighty. They are powerful, exuberant, effective through God. Through God. That means without God, without God, Without God, you lack the arsenal, you lack the weaponry to be able to do an effective warfare as a believer, as a Christian. So in other words, God is saying that it is your relationship with me, your intimacy with me that enables you to be able to war against the demons, the occultic powers, the witches and the wizards, the, 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 the spirits that are now warring against your life. So if you are struggling with lust, you are struggling with uh, the spirit of Jezebel in my own spirit, you don't go and try to use uh, uh, some physical means to get rid. No, it is your relationship in God, your righteousness in God, your holiness in God that empowers you over the enemy. Kabale base People of God, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So, you can throw the stone. You can grind the salt. You can use the chains and try to whoop the enemy. You can use the cane and try to whoop the enemy. Oh, oh praise the Lord. You can use whatever uh, uh, fetish means that has been told you in the pulpit to do whatever it is. But if your relationship with God is not established, there is no way you can win the battle. So he says, see, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. He has already given you the means by which you win that war. And this is the victory that overcometh. Even our faith. That means your faith in Christ Jesus, who is of God, is what enables you to win the battle. I hope somebody listens to me. See, even our faith. You see, you cannot go to the store and purchase faith. See, faith is diffused into you by your relationship with Christ. He is the spirit of his apostles. Uh, see, uh, 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 we have in the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak and you see, God now says that this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. See, so put 
putting one and two together and connecting the dots see the spirit of faith is Christ Jesus and for you to be a man of faith a woman of faith someone with great faith you must make sure that your relationship with Christ is solid and once you have been able to come to the place and the stature of faith in Christ then your weaponry is armed to be able to now do some serious damage to the devil to the devil Come and see fetish priests in suits in the church of God with oil, greenish, reddish, pinkish oil from the marine world and they tell you that you pour this oil in your food and when you eat it, no demon can come close to you. They are bringing produce from demonic worlds and they are using it to enchant you so that you still remain in your sin so that they can kill you. The weapons of our warfare is not that handkerchief that are being sold to you. It's not in that prayer shawl that are being sold to you. It's not in that oil, anointing oil they call, they say they, it, it comes from Jerusalem. I, I believe that we have to use the oil as being instructed by God, but it must not be too much and the people's faith now rest in the oil. Come and see people bringing gallons of oil, spending money bringing gallons of oil to the church for the, the, the man of God who came from the shrine to lay their hands on the oil. Wake up, church. Wake up, men of men and women of God. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There's a question I'm going to ask you before I continue. When you threw that stone, when you went to that all night gathering, did your problems go away? When you grinded that salt, as if you are grinding the devil. Did that lustful imagination run away? Did that demon after your life? Was he squashed? When you took the cane and you said you are whipping the devils behind. Did they stop the warfare? No. No. Wake up, men of God. Wake up, church. See, I am seriously burdened because, see, we are living the things that God has given to us and we are clinging towards humanistic ideas that are leading us to the pits of hell. If you're a man of God and you're listening to me, please, I am pleading with you. I'm beseeching you as Paul beseeched the church. If you are practicing those things, I pray that you wake up because you are wasting your time and the resources for the people. Men of God are using these things to get the money of the people of God, get your money, get your money in order for you to be, uh, be able to hit that strong man in your family that you need to show a seed of a thousand dollars. Before the stone will be effective. See, that, no, no. See, let's get into God's word. Jesus said, see, I have given you the power. That's what he says in his word. I have given you the power that whatsoever you shall bind here on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. See, you have to literally bind. But your binding will not be effective if you are not in holiness. If they are not in righteousness. So let's establish this. Your biggest weapon against the enemy is holiness. Righteousness. If you are sleeping around, it's not going to work. If you are masturbating, it won't work. If, if, if you are involved in polygamous marriage, it won't work. If you're a liar, it will not work. He only operates in holiness. 
That's the only way he operates. He only releases his angels to now fight for us in holiness. So he says, the angels of God encamped around the righteous. We have ministry angels that have been assigned to war for us. That's why David said, contend against those that contend against me. God himself protects and fights for his people. But if you are not in holiness, demons will keep on tormenting you. Will keep on whooping your behind. Will keep on frustrating you. And by the time you realize you are now committing suicide because you have given and sold your soul to the devil. He says, whatsoever you bind, I will bind. So literally, he says that he has given you the power. As many as uh, uh, believed, uh, to them gave him power to become sons of God. Gave him the authority. Gave him the right. The day that you accepted Jesus, he gave you the authority and the power to be able to war against the enemy. So, your biggest and number one weapon. <laughs> Is your holiness. The devil is afraid of a holy people, a holy generation. They won't try. So, for you to win the battle, one, be holy as God is holy. And once you are established in holiness, the only thing you can say is, I bind you, devil, and that word you spoke will do a lot of damage to the devil. Why do you think Jesus was able to conquer so many demons by his spoken word? He was holy. He was holy. Our Lord was holy. So he said, I bind you, Satan, and he's bound. I cast you out and he's, he's gone. Is somebody listening to me? Number one, holiness. Two, prayer. He says, whatever you bind, I will bind. I will bind. So you must make sure you are in prayer. Pray at all times. Pray in the spirit in all occasions. Make sure you are praying. A man of God who was a fetish priest before he converted was interviewed and he said, you see, see, the devil is afraid of someone who is holy and prays in tongues. Prays in tongues. So when you are praying in tongues, it's like, it's like a, a, a fire has been clothed. I, 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 I don't know. You have been emanated with fire. And the devil cannot penetrate. Fire. Make sure you are holy. And then prayer. And you see, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. For your prayer to be fervent. Not screaming and shouting. But fervent. Eh? It must be in accordance to the will of God, which is the word of God. So, see, you must also use scriptures. So, you make sure you are holy. Make sure you are praying. Fasting also is included. Make sure you are studying God's word. When the devil came to Jesus, he says, it is written. It is written. He said, it is written that how many of you go to warfare without your sword? Paul said, Paul said, the armory of God, the sword. It is the sword that is the offensive weapon that he gave you. And that sword is his word. How can the farmer go to the farm without his machete? Praise the Lord. How, how you listen to me? How can a US, US army uh, uh, go to the war without their guns, without the AK-47, without their rockets, without any weaponry? How? 
believers, it is time you get in God's word and you stay in God's word. Praises. The devil's afraid of praises. If you make sure you're holy, you have fervent prayer, you fast, live the fasting life, you study God's word, praises, my, 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 my. The Bible says the other day, the other day, Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were in chains, they were in shackles. Yes, it was physical, but can I also put it to you that a, a spiritual also it works. And they lifted up their voices when they were praying. They began to sing spiritual songs, praising God at the midnight hour. And brothers and sisters, come and see. The Bible says that suddenly there was an earthquake. Things were happening. If you praise God rightly. I'm not talking about that Azonto dance and, and the, the Jama you have been, you have been singing in the churches and, and, and the, the kind of fitty clubbly dance that you have been bringing into the church. I'm talking about genuine praises. And above all, make sure you have a positive declaration. Speak the right words. See, what so Ever a man thinketh, so he is. And out of, uh, uh, see, out of the heart, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is in you is what you speak. Therefore, you cannot speak God's words because you don't have it in you. If you can saturate yourself in prayer and in God's word, you'll be an effective warrior in God that no demon can withstand you. No powers of darkness can withstand you. No demon from hell, from under the sea, from uh, in the air, from the families can stand you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Stop throwing the stones. Any man of God that will tell you, go and bring a stone and throw. Look at him twice. He's an agent from the ground, from the pits of darkness. Oh yeah. Why in the scripture does it say Jesus instructed somebody to throw stones? Where? We are supposed to be following Jesus. Why in the scriptures does it say that the apostles threw stone at the devil? Grinded salt in the synagogue. Eh? wrote things on notes and buried it under the ground as if you are burying your problems wake up people of God listen to me the Lord loves you that's why he died for you and he wants us to be free but our liberty only lies in our relationship with him. Let us rise up men and women of God and get back to the place of intimacy. Get back in the word. Get back in prayer. Get back to Jesus so that he can lead us as, an, as a conqueror. He can lead us to conquer those battles that is ahead of us. God bless you. And until next time, I am Fred Watton of Crusaders Ministries International, Columbus, Ohio. If you are confronting any situations in your life and you need help with prayer, don't forget to call those numbers. Call. It's for free. Nobody will charge you for prayer. Jesus didn't charge for prayer. We are, we are not like, by grace of God, we are not like the churches in other places that will tell you, come and, come and show hundreds and thousands of dollars before you can receive a common prayer. Freely we have been given. And freely do we give as God enables us. Call the number. Whatever problem you have, I can assure you Jesus can touch you. God bless you.